Hi students, and welcome to today's lesson. I'm Ms. Lakusa. Today we will explore the question, how can electrical energy be used to move a light rail train? Are you ready? Grab your pencil and your science journal, and let's get started. How can we tell whether energy is present? Remember, energy is necessary to make something happen, and energy indicators show us that energy is present. Energy indicators are sound, light, temperature change, and motion. Now let's watch a video of a dark rail train. As you watch, pay attention to the energy indicators. Which energy indicators did you notice in the dark rail train video? Maybe you heard bells as the train got closer, or you saw the flashing lights on the train and other lights inside the train cars. And of course, the train was moving. Light rail trains use a motor to turn their wheels and move. The motor is electric. That means it transforms electrical energy into mechanical energy. Remember, mechanical energy is the energy an object has due to its motion or position. What new questions do you have about energy in the dark rail system? I wonder, where does the electrical energy come from? Maybe you wonder, how does the electrical energy move through the train car? Or how does the electrical energy get to the motor? These are great questions. Let's add them to our driving question board. Great. Let's keep these questions in mind as we explore the question, how can electrical energy be used to move a light rail train? Do you know what this is? It's a circuit. A circuit is a system that includes the source of electrical energy and the complete path of an electrical current. Let's identify each component of the circuit. These are strips of aluminum foil. And this is an incandescent flashlight bulb. Do you recognize this? It's a battery with some tape on it. In a closed circuit, electrical energy flows from the energy source through each component and back to the energy source. If I touch the free end of this aluminum foil strip to the center of the light bulb's metal base, what do you think will happen? When the circuit is closed, the light bulb lights up. That's so interesting. Let's use this diagram of a light rail system to learn even more. This is a substation. Substations are found near the rails along a train route. Substations provide electrical energy to the light rail system. Look at these materials. This is a battery. This is a battery holder. This is a roll of copper foil tape. And this is a motor. How can we use these materials to model how electricity flows through a light rail system? While well, the substation is the source of electrical energy for a light rail system, do you think the battery can represent the substation? We can place the battery inside the battery holder, and maybe this motor can represent the train's motor. Hmm, but what about the copper foil tape? Hey, I have an idea. I use the copper foil tape to make copper foil tape strips. The strips create a closed circuit from the battery to the motor and back to the battery. This is a light rail circuit model. I put a piece of tape on the motor so we can see it move more easily. Watch. Wow, the energy from the battery made the motor turn really fast. That makes me wonder. What can prevent the light rail circuit model from working correctly? What about the copper foil tape? If I leave a gap between the copper foil tape and the motor, the motor does not work. To close the circuit and turn on the motor, I have to connect all the components. Let's return to our diagram. Let's trace the path of electricity from the substation along the overhead wires through the paintograph to the motor of the train. We know the circuit is closed because the electricity flows in a complete path that starts and ends at the substation 
the electricity even flows through the wheels, the rails, and return cable. Remember, the motor in a light rail train is electric. Think about what an electric motor does. What are some indicators that electrical energy is transformed into mechanical energy in a light rail system? Well, the gears in the motor have mechanical energy and they make the train move. Do you agree? Yes, when the train is moving, it has mechanical energy. We just saw how electricity flows through a light rail system. Do you remember the path the electricity takes? Use your finger to trace the path on this diagram. Did you trace a path that looks like this? If so, great job. The yellow arrows indicate the direction of energy flow. Hey, this diagram is starting to look just like my light rail circuit model. I'll add some labels to show where I use copper foil tape and a label to show where we paste the battery. And hey, let's add a key to our yellow arrows. The yellow arrows represent the electric energy flow. Energy comes from the substation represented by the battery and flows through the overhead wires. Then the energy flows down the pantograph into the train and through the wheels and rails back to the battery in a closed circuit. Now our diagram really looks like a model. Your task after this lesson will be to use this model to write a description of how energy transformation causes the train to move. Did you notice this part of our model? This part is called the pantograph. The pantograph is an important part of the light rail system. It helps electrical energy move the train. Let's watch two video clips to learn more about the pantograph. Interesting. Now let's watch the other video clip. What did you notice about the pantograph in the video clips? I saw the pantograph go down and then go back up. And I saw the pantograph slide across the wires. What do you think the purpose of the pantograph is? Do you think the pantograph gets electricity to the train because the pantograph is between the energy source and the motor? I think so. My light rail circuit model didn't work when I did not close the circuit. The pantograph connects to the wires to close the circuit. When the pantograph contacts the overhead wires, it closes the circuit. That allows electricity to flow to the train's motor. In our next lesson, we will use this light rail circuit model to learn even more about pantographs. Let's review your task for today. Write a description of how energy transformation causes the train to move. 